Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Complete Sports Media's podcast. I'm your host, Darren Campbell. We're excited you could join us today. We are going to uh, be breaking down some hockey today with Dale Corey. Uh, fresh off a uh, 5 nothing shellacking uh, the Canucks took in the opening game of the second round against the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of renewed optimism over this team after they were able to uh, knock off the defending champion St. Louis Blues and suddenly um, we come to this first game and I'm not sure if it was tiredness or was it just uh, a, a superior team in Las Vegas but uh, Canucks didn't didn't look very good, and um, yeah, let's hope we can see a better effort going forward. Uh, what were your thoughts after that first game, Dale? Well, well, you know, being in Penticton here, where we've been uh, through a forest fire up in the hills for about a week now, uh, I think Travis Green needs to light a little bit of a fire underneath his uh, boys for game two in the series. Not, of course, to make light of the fire and everybody's been safe and they've downgraded it, but uh, I just think it was, it's a good Vegas team. I mean, they... Uh, they surprised me a lot. I mean, I, I was impressed by them last night watching. You don't really get to see them very much. And obviously, um, you know, a few round robin games and, and first round series, but uh, they're big, they're physical, and they're fast. Uh, and especially their speed, that really surprised me. Obviously, it surprised the Canucks to some degree as well because they really didn't have much of an answer for it. Um, uh, they just utilized their speed so much, I think, to get in behind Vancouver's defense. And you know, they, they really shouldn't have been tired. And, and I don't think any team can really use that excuse in these uh, strange playoffs we're in the middle of because they're not traveling anywhere. They're, they're in their hotel. They're walking across the street to the arena, practicing there, playing their games there. So they don't have the, uh, the rigors of travel. And especially in Vancouver, it affects the Canucks that much more than any other team because they travel more than anybody else. So, uh, so I don't think that's an excuse. Um, you know, I, I don't think the Canucks are out of it. Obviously, it's just one game. But um, uh, Vegas was impressive in game one last night, for sure. Yeah, yeah, they sure were. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, anybody would have expected a, a 5 nothing win like that. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, it was a very, very dominant win. Uh, they, they utilized a, a smart game plan, um, being able to neutralize Quinn Hughes. Uh, that was the... Probably the worst game as a pro I've I've seen yeah. Quinn ever play, and and um, yeah, he just uh, wasn't able to find that open ice, wasn't able to find those lanes across the mm -hmm. um, blue line, and um, yeah, they seem to really employ a a great game plan. Uh, we saw on the coverage that uh, both uh, Dallas Green and uh, the other, uh, you know, some of the players came over and talked a little bit to the young guy and tried to boost the spirits up, but you yeah. could tell he was down and. Um, yeah, that, that uh, was an effective strategy to neutralize one of the Canucks' best players uh, coming into the, this round. Yeah, well, and, and I really noticed that one of the power plays, and I think it was still in the first period when, when the Canucks had one of those power plays, twice he had shots blocked at the point or tried to pass it across, not as much a shot blocked, but tried to feed it across ice and, and had a stick in the way and it got poked away. So, so yeah, Vegas' strategy was, was to get on him, not give him that chance to move the puck from that point, especially with a man advantage, uh, and they did that very well. Um, they just didn't give him much room to move. He needs that free ice to, to wheel and, and to create those scoring opportunities in the offensive zone, and he just didn't get that. But, I mean, I, was, uh, I really took note of the play where twice he tried to feed it across and, and both times had it blocked and poked out of zone. So then you've got to get back into the neutral zone to regroup before you go back in on the power play. And that took a lot of time off the clock and, and uh, Canucks just weren't able to, to utilize him as much and capitalize on, on the few opportunities they really did have. Yeah. And um, also the, the other top guys uh, for the Canucks uh, didn't produce very much. Uh, uh, Elias Pedersen, uh, no shots. Uh, Brock Besser, no shots. Uh, the, the, those top guys that were, you know, able to produce and score a lot in that St. Louis series, uh, just weren't there um, for some reason for that first game. Um, anything that you, you noticed uh, why they were being neutralized and shut down? Well, I think, I mean, Vegas is a, a fairly decent defensive core as well, and they just didn't give them, they didn't allow them, I don't think, to get in front of the net enough and, and to get any of those lanes, you know, in, in 
um, in, in by the, uh, the hash marks there and, and, and get a good scoring opportunity a little bit higher uh, away from the goal. Um, so they didn't get those kinds of opportunities. Uh, I don't think it was as much the Canucks. I didn't think it was a great game by the Canucks. I didn't think overall as a group they played very well. And, and I mean, we saw Bo Horvat make some, some fabulous, fabulous plays against Minnesota, single-handedly scoring some goals there. Um, you know, he, he wasn't able to really uh, freewheel it too much and, and create some of those scoring opportunities. But I think what we saw in the uh, St. Louis series is the Canucks had some great uh, offensive output from their third and fourth lines. Um, you know, Mott scoring uh, back-to-back two-goal games, or Russell, um, uh, Jay Beagle getting involved, those kinds of things. And um, if the Canucks main guys are, are getting stymied and credit the other team for doing a lot of that, then it's got to be those third and fourth line players that come through. And they can't do it every time. Uh, if they do it, that can help the Canucks win a game. Uh, but if the top guys aren't, uh, aren't getting through as well either, uh, they need more shots on that. I thought, again, it was, it was maybe too much of an individual approach when, when guys were coming through the neutral zone or breaking inside uh, the offensive blue line. I didn't really think that they were they were seeing the other guys very well. They were trying to do it on their own. Maybe they felt pressure of, okay, if I can take the team on my back and score a goal and give us some momentum, but that obviously just never happened through the game. Uh, Leonard played pretty well in goal for Vegas, made a couple of good saves when he needed, when it was maybe a 2-0, 3-0 game. And uh, yeah, from a Vegas standpoint, it was pretty much a total team effort. Yeah, they, yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't a close game at all. Uh, you know, it wasn't something that you could point to. There was something that uh, you know, Canucks may, had a bad turnover. It was a one goal game. It was just a you know, complete domination, five five nothing win. Um, I think there was a lot of hope that um, the goalie controversy that started right before the the, the second round, where um, Mark Andre Fleury's agent Alan Walsh had posted that picture of the sword going through yeah. him uh, and, uh, you know, having uh, DeBoer's name on the sword. Um, uh, it was a, uh, yeah, not a, not a great move on the agent's part. And I, I think, you know, everybody said as much, but uh, it has created a, you know, po- possible controversy, but Lander played great, uh, had a, had a huge shutout and, and he's played really good since they picked him up on, on, on a trade from Chicago. And um, yeah, he's, been able to really, uh, you know, assert his dominance in the crease, and and the Canucks had no answers for him. Yeah, you know, uh, what they say last night, Leonard's the the only goaltender, the first goaltender to to get traded away or leave a team and then come back in the playoffs and beat them in the playoffs. But uh, that obviously gave him a lot of momentum uh, or, or confidence in his abilities. Um, they've got two good goaltenders there. Yeah, I kind of wondered how it would affect things. Um, as a player, you know, and, and obviously as fans and, and we work in the media, you just got to shake your head sometime at, at where where people's thoughts are. There is uh, no I in team. It's about a group collectively playing their best. You don't want uh, agents. You don't want other people getting in the mix there. Yeah, you know, uh, Mark andre can say he's, he's just thinking of my best interest, but he wasn't thinking of the team's best interest, and that's what it's all about. It's a team game. Uh, and the, the agent certainly doesn't understand that or get that to to go out on a limb and do something like that in the middle of the playoffs just because his client isn't playing uh, or or going to start that game. It doesn't mean that Laner doesn't have a bad game and Mark Andre is not in there the next game for that reason and plays the rest of the playoffs. So, uh, but it didn't really turn into the distraction that that we kind of thought it might. Um, Vegas Vegas got past it. Whatever happened in the dressing room prior to the game. Uh, Obviously, it was it was all taken care of because uh, uh, Vegas didn't show any uh, any signs that it, that it had any effect on him that way. And Laner played very well, very well. He he made some of those key saves, as I mentioned, when it was still a close hockey game. Canucks get a goal or two and get some momentum. It changes things, but but they just weren't able to do it. And, you know, I think um, most coaches and players, especially coaches, will tell you, you know it's. It's much tougher to lose uh, by one goal in five overtimes in the playoffs than especially in game one. You get your butt kicked a little bit, but it opens up your eyes. You now know that, hey, we have to play much better. We have to do certain things or it's going to happen again and again, and, and we're going to lose the series. So, so yeah. I think it's, uh, it, it's an eye-opener for the Canucks that way. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, you know, it might 
uh, have the uh, guys listen to Travis Green's approach. I said Dallas Green earlier. <laughs> Travis Green, obviously the coach. Um, yeah, he's um, he's been a little prickly uh, with the media, uh, you know, since he's been in the bubble, and he's um, he's uh, you know not as as warm and and uh, accommodating to reporters' questions these days. He seems like he's uh, maybe feeling a bit of the stress uh, of the job and and you know trying to push these young guys further. Um, you know, I guess uh, it's, it's, it is good sometimes when, you know, a team uh, really gets beat that bad. Then he said, hey, nobody played the system. If you play the system, we got a shot at this and maybe he, he can get some buy-in on it and uh, hopefully he can get some guys going. Uh, Canucks have never beat uh, Vegas in the whole history of the Vegas uh, franchise, 9-0-2. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they just don't have success. Uh, that was Laner's third shutout against the Canucks in his career. Uh, they just seem like a, a super, super solid team. I, I couldn't believe uh, Max Pacioretty. Uh, you know, he looks so, so reborn in Vegas. Eight shots last night. Uh, just, you know, on fire. Um, you know, Vegas uh, did, you know, some of the most unprecedented things we've ever seen in any type of professional sports when they came in that first year and were able to go all the way to the Stanley Cup final, uh, shock the world. And, and uh, you know, they've been able to keep that foundation going having uh, incredible success again. And, and they mm -hmm. just roll those four lines, the speed, the physicality. Uh, so much about them is, is, you know, really a pleasure to watch. Uh, I just hope the Canucks can figure out a, a system and a, and a way to employ so, you know, they can make a series out of it. Um, we were already kind of playing with house money. I don't think anybody <laughs> expected the Canucks to win the cup this year and go really, really far. But um, yeah, I would really, it would be nice if they can win some games, make a series out of this and, Hopefully they can come up with a plan because Vegas is strong all the way. Four, four yeah. lines, uh, six defensemen, great goalie. Uh, yeah, they're going to be a hard team to beat. Yeah, I mean, they've, they're strong. I mean, they've got some good experience. You think of Stone and, and what he got with Ottawa for those few years, Patch Reddy with Montreal. Um, they brought them all together, and, and uh, DeBoer has done a great job, I think, working with them near the end of the season here when, when they made the coaching change. Um but yeah, they've they've got some good experience on that team. They know how to win. They they just impressed me. You don't see them very often, uh, but last night I was impressed with them. Uh, the Canucks didn't get to use the speed that they have, and and they're they're a highly potent offensive team, and that just didn't show last night. So uh, I think they've got to take it to them that much more. They didn't get much uh, extended pressure in the offensive zone. Uh, it was kind of one time, maybe one shot, and and they were out. And um, I think maybe getting a little physical. I know uh, Roussel had uh, a few opportunities there. Thought there might be a fight. I think when it maybe got to two or three nothing, they had to do something like that and just stir the pot a little bit, get the bench uh, motivated a little bit more. But uh, it's just game one. It's it's a seven game series, and uh, if you're a Canucks fan, you have to rely on the fact that the guys will learn from it, um, that they are a good hockey team, and even though they don't have the playoff experience, if the Vegas does, having gone to the final two years ago, and, and they brought in some of these guys like Stone and, and Patch Reddy since that time um, to add to their list of experienced players. But I think the Canucks have to, to rely on that, hey, we're a young team. We're, we're a creative team with the puck offensively. We've got lots of talent up front. Let's just keep pushing them and pushing them. The goals will come, and uh, hopefully the wins come as a result of that as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, Markstrom didn't look very good. Uh, he was in a, obviously one of the best players for the Canucks in that qualifying round with Minnesota and then in the St. Louis first round. Uh, he also struggles against Vegas in his career, 2-7-1, 484 goals against average and 886 save percentage. Not, not good enough, not going to um, win you games and, and you know get you any success. Uh, yeah, he seemed a little bit out of place uh, on a, some of those goals. Yeah, uh, yeah. Overplayed some of them as well and uh, let some rebounds out. Um, just not a typical Markstrom performance uh, that we've seen out of them this year. Yeah, we noticed that as well watching last night. He slid across the net a few times and then couldn't get back for the other shot and, and had the puck get by him there. So, um, you know, you, you need help up front. We've, the Canucks have relied on Markstrom for so much and he played so, so well. Um, I mean, I thought he really, Minnesota and St. Louis, I thought he was the key in those series. I mean, Bo made some great plays and so did some other players and Mott's goals. But, um, but uh, Jacob Marstrom was the key guy there, I think. And, and as he goes in a lot of ways, so go the Canucks. He's 
He's, uh, he doesn't have that playoff experience uh, and, and is similar to pretty much every player on the team. And Jay Beagle is maybe one of the few, obviously, that's got that Stanley Cup ring. But, um, but he's got to be strong, and, and he wasn't as much. Uh, if, there, if there's anybody that knows, it's, it's Jacob because he plays with a lot of pride and, and has fun out there and wants to take the team on his shoulders and run with it. And I'm pretty confident he's still going to get that chance to do that. Um, I'd love to see Tyler Myers back in the lineup. And I know they talked when uh, after the St. Louis game and he hurt that left shoulder when he went into the boards and hasn't played for a few games. He was high-fiving with his right hand the other day, I guess, and had the left hand out after the game six win against St. Louis. So that tells you that shoulder is maybe feeling a little bit better. Uh, but I think with, with the speed that's, that uh, Vegas uses coming into the offensive zone, I think Tyler Myers would help a lot. And, I'm not sure what the Toffoli situation is is as well, but I think they could use a veteran like Tyler Toffoli in there as well. And unfortunately, they're banged up a little bit. If they can get some of those guys back, I, I certainly don't think they're out of the series. No, no. It's one game. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people are pushing the panic button already and uh, counting the Canucks out. But uh, as we saw, they, uh, they lost the opening game to Minnesota, uh, came back and won three straight. They... Uh, you know, uh, had St. Louis, you know, tie the, the series up after being up two games. Uh, St. Louis came back and won those two games, and then the Canucks uh, dominated in the next two. So, yeah, um, yeah you know, definitely not counting them out, but it was tough to, to see. Uh, you know, the city's getting excited more and more. You and I have been talking about this for <laughs> weeks. So, uh, you know, starting to see the Canuck fever. Uh, they haven't won a, a series since 2011. It's been way too long for this city, who's you know, um, in this province, a very hockey-starved uh, province and lo loving when the Canucks do well. And, um, yeah, it was just disappointing uh, that it was a 5 nothing win. There wasn't even, uh, you know, a thought that uh, they would be able to win that game at any point. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, push, put that one uh, to bed. And, uh, yeah, hopefully tomorrow night, 645 puck, puck drop, uh, we'll be able to see a better performance and maybe the Canucks can tie the series back up. Uh, Let's yeah. hope for, um, yes, yeah, a, a much better performance. Uh, why don't we uh, shed some light on some of the other series too? The other Western Conference matchup has uh, Colorado against Dallas. Um, Dallas looked uh, amazingly strong yeah. that first game. I, I actually picked uh, Colorado to dominate the series and come out of it uh, quite handily and easily, but um, uh, the Stars just had a super balanced attack, uh, played fantastic. Um, Colorado did lose their um, goalie Grubauer c quite early in the game. Um, and uh, he hurt his left leg. It looks like he's out indefinitely. But um, Frank uh, has had a great season. He uh, ended up 21-7-4 and with a 9.23 save percentage on the year. So they're, they're not getting a lot of drop off there. Uh, all, unfortunately, also Eric Johnson uh, was hurt um, with a collision with Blake Como. And, and he'll be out uh, indefinitely as well. Doesn't look like he'll suit up for... Game two. Um, game two is today, uh, 7.30 and uh, no, 6.45 uh, puck drop. Um, but yeah, the Stars, um, yeah, really surprised me. Uh, how about yourself? Uh, they seem to just really have a, a, an amazing attack and, and won the game 5-3. Yeah, I, any team's got Joe Pavelski. <laughs> he just uh, is able to do so much out there and just uh, that veteran guy. And when you see him in his interviews, he just exudes confidence. Um, and, and he certainly helped Dallas uh, perform the way they have. I mean, they were down 2-1 in the series to Calgary and, and won, those, won, won uh, three straight to, to take over control of it and, and take that series as well. So uh, they've been playing great hockey. I, I think this is one of those series that, that is going to go that six or seven games and probably seven. I think both the teams are pretty evenly matched. Um, and as to who can come out on top, yeah, any any given game is, is going to be a battle there. So I didn't get a chance to see game one. I'm looking forward to watching game two tonight because uh, uh, I'd like to, like to see what these two teams can do. And it's a pretty pivotal game. If Dallas can win tonight, uh, they really uh, have the upper hand right now. So there's some pressure in Colorado. And, and uh, Colorado's got some veteran players there that they're going to try to push back tonight. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um... Colorado's up top line with McKinnon, Landeskog, and Ranton. And uh, McKinnon had two goals, one assist, six shots. Landeskog, one goal, one assist, four shots. And Ranton had assist with five shots. So their top line did, didn't let them down at all. Um, they just didn't get any scoring from any anybody else, really. Um, but look at the stars. Uh, Jamie Benn, uh, down year. He's, uh, you know, he's definitely mm -hmm. 
on the downside of his career, unfortunately. But uh, during these playoffs, he's had a really big resurgence. He had three assists, set up some beautiful goals. Radulov, two goals, one assist. Sagan, one goal, one assist. Heinz mm. got a goal. Como got a goal. Um, tons of, of scoring, uh, lots of pressure. Um, yeah, Dallas uh, really blew me away. And, and that series against Calgary, um, you know, it really – it really, um, you know, battle tested them. Uh, that was a he- hell of a series. Uh, that was super yeah. fun to watch. I couldn't yeah. believe that game when they were down uh, uh, three nothing and won the game uh, seven three. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's one of the craziest comebacks I've ever seen. Uh, I just, uh, you know, that that showed that they they've got a lot of heart and a lot of metal. Yeah, yeah. It. Uh, I watched that game and yeah, when Calgary was up three, I was like, okay, this their Dallas is in tough at this point, but. Uh, um, there's just so many little things in the game that, that can change the outcome that can give a team that's down three nothing some momentum and you get a goal and uh, most coaches will tell you uh, uh, a two or, or a three goal lead especially a three goal lead is, is tough to play with because you let down your guard a little bit you maybe soften up you think well we're up three we can give them one or, or even two and we're still okay and, and that's the worst you got a two goal lead you're still pushing to keep getting goals. You got a four goal lead. Yeah, you can relax a little bit. You got a couple goals to give, but uh, uh, three goals is is ugly because we've we've seen uh, you know in the in the uh, uh, Toronto series in the opening round or the or the elimination round where uh, they came from three goals down the last few minutes to tie and won in overtime. So the teams can do those kinds of things. Uh, Dallas, Dallas has got a pretty balanced attack and. You, all those names you just mentioned a minute ago, I mean, they're veteran players that, that have been there before. Dallas has always kind of been around, around, you know, sniffing around that Stanley Cup in these last few years and decent teams which just haven't got over the edge. But it's a good veteran team right now. And, uh, you know, Jamie Benn knows how to win. He's got that experience. And, uh, yeah, tonight's a pivotal one for, uh, uh, for Dallas and a chance to go up too, but for Colorado to try to get back in the series. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, super pivotal. Uh, yeah, game two. Uh, it's it's usually a very big, big, big game, no matter what. Uh, uh, let's turn to the Eastern Conference. Uh, why don't we touch base on uh, Tampa and Boston? Um, Boston had the big three-two win to uh, open their their series in game one, and uh, yeah, that that top line is just uh, so hard to beat sometimes yeah. you know i you know they when they when they are on uh, it's it's a joy to watch the their passing is just phenomenal they get into really great scoring opportunities and they bury it uh marshan one goal one assist with three shots pasternak goal and assist uh with three shots as well bergeron had a, an assist and five shots uh Krejci comes in all the time on that power play um man just yeah year after year after year those guys are, are still doing it we saw them do that against the Canucks in 2011, and they're, they're still, you know, a phenomenal team that's um, right in there, uh, you know, scoring really big goals for the Bruins. Yeah. But are they not maybe the best line in the NHL right now? I mean, you, you really have to, I think, kind of take a look that way. And, and even though it's got Brad Marchand on that line, and none of us as Canuck fans like to admit that kind of thing, but he scored a beauty last night too. So he's uh, he's been playing pretty well, and the entire line has, and he just worked go well together and just seem so strong. Um, uh, you know, Tampa's not a bad team, but they're they're missing some key players as well. And I just think Boston's on a roll right now. They they look very good. Um, and I, I got to think they've got a pretty good shot at, at getting through and, and moving on to the next round. Yeah. Um, I think uh, some of the um, smoke from the fire has moved into your apartment and uh, we can't see it anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, it got suddenly pretty dark there again. So, uh, yeah, I hope you can uh, get a fan to blow the smoke away and we can see you. <laughs> um, yeah, Tampa, I mean, didn't look terrible. Obviously, it was just a 3-2 loss. Um, you know, Victor Hedman looked phenomenal. Two goals, seven shots on goal. Um, he is just such a stud defenseman and, uh, you know, super dominant back there. Um, you know, he, he has been banged up a little bit, but obviously had a fantastic performance in that game one. Uh, nobody else could uh, reach the uh, score sheet. Um, Braden Point uh, has had a phenomenal playoffs already, had four shots and one assist. But, um, yeah, they got to get some scoring. Uh, yeah. A little more than just their defenseman getting two goals uh, to give them a chance to – to take a, you know, take a, take a victory out of the series here. 
Yeah, well, the way Boston played, you get that three-goal lead. I mean, kind of flipped it over to the Canucks game at that point and, and saw that it was a 3-2 final. Uh, so Tampa obviously got some goals to try to make it a little bit closer. But uh, uh, I think Boston's going to be a really tough team to – if you get down two or three goals to them in the third period, I think it's it's going to be tough to come back against them specifically. Uh, they're, they're just a strong team, and, and uh, it seems year after year, and, and – uh, Cassidy's yes, done a great job with them to to get them into that kind of unit. And, and if that top line is scoring, if they get that two or three a game, which they're highly capable of doing, I think it makes it tough on anybody else. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that line uh, just, oh, man, just continues to dominate and has for a decade. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, you know, think Boston's strong going further. Um, we'll get to see the first game uh, with the Islanders. Flyers tonight, four o'clock puck drop. Uh, it's game two's uh, Wednesday at noon. Um, yeah, what do you? How do you see this uh, series shaking out? Uh, yeah, both both teams have looked really, really good in this yeah. bubble, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, going to be a hard, hard series to handicap. Well, I, Trotz has done a great job with the Islanders, and, and they've got those young guys. We, we talked about uh, whatever he's done, and, and Matthew Barzell, and, and some of those young guys. Um, uh, but they've got uh, uh, a, a team that, that is kind of building up a little bit more. Uh, Philadelphia has uh, surprised a lot of people along the way so far as well, I think. Um, maybe didn't expect them to, to be there at this point, but uh, Alain Vigneault has got that experience as a coach as well and, and understands at this point with eight teams left in the Stanley Cup playoffs, you know, what those intangibles can be to try to get your team a win and, and move forward in the playoffs. So, um uh, so I think, uh, uh, you know, that's going to be one of those series as well that I can see going six or seven games because I don't think there's that much difference between the two. I think that uh, it's open a little bit more and um, either team uh, can come through um, can look at being goaltending to some degree. But uh, um, again, it's, it's one of those where I think they're pretty evenly matched and, and it's going to be a great series as well. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, no, I find it hard to um, see the difference and, uh, you know, make a, a accurate prediction. Uh, yeah, Islanders uh, have really, uh, you know, put together a, a, a super strong team and uh, they're going into a new building next year. They're really wanting to, um, you know, have a good showing this year. So uh, they, you know, could attract a huge fan base. Obviously, ticket prices will rise up in New York when they have a new building. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Philadelphia has surprised me. They 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 played really well uh, uh, since the um, playoffs began, and um, yeah, it's going to be a fun series. Um, I'm looking forward to to watching it, and um, yeah, it it should be interesting. I agree. I think uh, yeah. seven games is a really accurate prediction. It's probably going to go really far. So, um, yeah, the playoffs have been fun. Um, you know, I I'm not noticing. Uh, you know, the the fans not being there. They've done a lot of really good things with the virtual fans and the crowd noise and you're getting to focus in on the action so much more and um yeah it's been exciting playoffs um really really good show yeah you know i i, I agree i think it's been uh it's been one of those years it's a strange kind of year it's so vastly different than what we're used to uh so many of those intangibles have been taken away from traveling back and forth and you know you play you play your first two games somewhere in the case of the st louis series i mean uh, in normal times, they would have gone to St. Louis and the things would have held true. Won two games there thinking, wow, we're coming home to our home building and all of a sudden you lose two uh, and you're back to square one again. Um, uh, I just, uh, I, I think of the eight teams that are left, um, the Canucks, you know, are, are probably a little bit lower from from uh, just having that Stanley Cup experience and, and, and not having that with so many young guys. But, you know, they've, they've got that, They've got that um, uh, that get up and go and that drive with with being so young and, and not knowing the disappointment of losing in the playoffs. Uh, so they just want to kind of have fun and win. And as you mentioned, it's kind of all gravy from here. But uh, I was I was so impressed with the Canucks a few times in in, in uh, uh, the Minnesota series. But against St. Louis, uh, when the Blues won those two games to tie the series and got a three one in Game Five. I kind of said to my son York, I said, if the Canucks give up one more goal here, I think it's I mean, they're going to be in tough, and and not just in tough to win that game, but the series then as well. If St. Louis would have won three straight, but 
But the way they battled back and just took control of the hockey game was so impressive to see in that game five and, and continued that obviously in game six to take out the Blues. So I think the Canucks are far from, from over yet. Yeah, they didn't look good in game one. Um, now they know what it takes. You, you've got a better sense. And they haven't, haven't played Vegas in months and months and months either. You can watch them on tape in some of these games. Um, but, you know, there's no travel. There's the, the teams are close to the building. They're going there. They can somewhat focus on hockey. The emotions of playing in front of a home crowd or, or any other team's barn isn't there anymore. It's the same for both teams. A lot of those things are taken out of the mix, and you're there to play some hockey. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think we've got some great games coming up. I'll be in front of the TV tomorrow night again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it a lot uh, as well. Uh, yeah, you mentioned the, the no travel and having the – the teams uh, have to endure that. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot easier for Travis Green uh, facing Vegas and not having the guys in Vegas. Uh, you know, there's a lot of um, temptation there and a lot of want guys that want to go out and uh, experience the nightlife and have, have fun uh, in Vegas. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about that. They're stuck in the bubble <laughs> and uh, they can just focus 100% on hockey and, and just move forward. So, um, yeah, I guess that's a good – that's one of the good things that about being in the bubble uh, – yeah. No, no worries and distractions there. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where yeah they can they can just focus on hockey and there's just so much to the playoffs. You know, we we just can't imagine sitting in our chairs in front of our computer here what it's like to travel back and forth. We've done it and I've done it enough with junior hockey teams over the years and 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 you see the thrill of winning a game on the road that maybe you didn't expect to win and what that dressing room or that bus ride home is like and obviously it goes the other way as well. So there's there's so many highs and lows, and, and maybe that's the one thing for the Canucks. They're so young at this and so inexperienced in Stanley Cup playoffs. You have to not allow those highs and lows to get to you. It's just one game last night. didn't matter if it was 5 nothing or 2-1 in five overtime periods. You still lost the game. You can't lose four of them. Um, so they have to forget about that low of losing last night and, and get back to playing the kind of game they played and, or they have been playing. And, and as I mentioned, I'm, I'm optimistic because – Every time they've seemed to get down a little bit, uh, losing a game in the Minnesota series or St. Louis and losing two, uh, they've been able to battle back and, and uh, impress us with, with their skills. So um, I look forward to a much better game tomorrow night and, uh, and the chance to maybe even up the series. And, and you know, to, to put Vegas on their heels would be interesting as well. I mean, they, they've got a veteran team and a good, fast team, but if the Canucks can, can – win a game or two and put Vegas on its heels, then things change a little bit more and the Canucks young players get more confident as, as they go through the playoffs. So still lots of hockey to be played. Thank goodness. Yeah. Even if it is the end of August. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Even if it is. Yeah. Well, we, uh, you and I uh, talked a couple of weeks ago and they were uh, uh, talking about the the top, those eight teams that were getting eliminated in that uh, initial round, the qualifying round, and they all had, a 12.5% chance at getting that number one pick. And uh, Canucks have never had any success at the draft lottery. I'm really glad they're the top eight in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, yeah, we'll hopefully get a lot more success than they had with the draft lottery ever. And, yeah, uh, yeah to be in the top eight, it's a huge accomplishment in today's yeah. NHL. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I think they can uh, keep it up. I think there's, uh, there's going to be a, a fairly decent series ahead. Uh, I, I don't think, um, you know, the Canucks showed anything like they, they, they could play uh, in that opening game. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Really, really fun. And uh, I'm, I'm super happy that you could join me today. Uh, it's always great to um, break down sports and especially uh, hockey. Uh, I know how close you and, and York have been watching the games. And uh, so have I. Nice to be able to um, send texts back and forth with you. And, and uh, yeah, know that we're we're both uh, hanging on the edge of our seat as the games go on. And uh, yeah, I, I I also wanted to just uh, say um, you know um, all of our thoughts have been with Penticton and uh, you you guys going through the wildfire there. I'm glad it seems like uh, they've got a handle on it and uh, there's not going to be any, any homes threatened anymore. Um, how does how does it sit right now? Well, as you can see, I'm in the dark here again, so I'm not totally sure. But, um, no, things are better. Uh, they expect tomorrow to be the last EOC briefing. There have been noon briefings every day 
Uh, I mean, it kicked in gear last Tuesday. I was on my computer writing a story and got a text and said, hey, you know what, fire. Um, I looked out my bedroom window, which faces south uh, towards the Skaha Lake area, and I'm in kind of the north end, closer to Okanagan Lake, but I could see smoke, so I got in my truck and went down there, and, and uh, last Tuesday, about 3.30 is when it all kind of kicked in. Uh, but the alert for nearly 4,000 uh, properties in Penticton uh, was lifted today. They expect in the next day or two that uh, the 319 properties at Heritage Hills, which is along East, east Side Road uh, on Skaha, uh, will get lifted as well. People get back to the homes. And more and more, I mean, we talked to Bees, Fred Harbinson. He's one of the people that's been uh, evacuated out of their home uh, at Heritage Hills. So. Uh, I believe players are supposed to start arriving today for conditioning camp. So Fred's been kind of dealing with not being uh, settled in home and still trying to get ready for a hockey season. But that's minor, minor compared. Uh, you know, one family lost their home and we feel for them. Uh, but it's amazing to see how BC Wildfire Service in a situation like this comes to the aid of the community. And um, at this point, we, we all think the worst is over. And um the tourists uh, can stay and, and somewhat relax a little bit more and um we welcome you here to penticton it's a beautiful place and and the fire for the most part is is being downgraded and and i think the worst is over so but thanks to everybody for their thoughts because it's uh it's uh it's a huge thing there were a couple hundred firefighters and firefighters from all over the valley and and throughout bc i mean they drove their fire trucks here and, and helped especially with structure protection as much as they could so um, glad that uh, that it's over and 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 kind of calming down now and we get back to normal and focusing on willing those Canucks into a playoff win here. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, thanks for the update and glad you guys are safe and uh, yeah, the worst is behind you and um, yeah, moving forward, uh, let's hope uh, we don't see any more forest fires as the summer wears down and uh, yeah, we can move into hockey season and, uh, and enjoy it. Yeah, even though it is, like you say, August. Uh, I'm glad to see, hear the V's are arriving and I can't wait to get some updates yeah. in the coming weeks uh, about the team. And we'll uh, we'll go over a lot of the individual players, go over the team as a whole and get a good preview as they head into the fall and uh, eventually into the start of the season. And that's scheduled for December 1st, correct? Yeah, we're just going to roll from one season into another here. We'll uh, we'll finish watching the Stanley Cup playoffs. The, the Junior B Leagues, uh, we talked a few weeks ago, are, are kind of looking at having an earlier start, and I haven't seen anything to the contrary at this point. Uh, but, yeah, the BC Junior Hockey League uh, uh, is looking at December 1st as a start. Uh, it'll give the teams a chance for a, a longer uh, training camp, but they're also scheduling a lot of exhibition games, and I'm led to believe that, uh, those games will be on hockey TV so that the fans that can't go to the games maybe at that point. I think they pushed it back to December 1st, hopeful that fans will be allowed back in at that point. And, and certainly these teams need the revenue from, from fans in the building. But uh, I'm led to believe hockey TV will broadcast all of those kind of preseason exhibition games and mini tournaments. So the fans will still get to watch their teams perform and uh, get prepared for uh, what we hope is, is a season um, is nothing concrete until we start playing and that could always change as well but uh we hope people stay safe uh don't have those big parties uh where there's hundreds of people there it's just not helping matters we all want to be safe and move on from this yeah yeah you're right good well said well said um yeah well uh i appreciate you joining me as always uh it was a lot of fun and i i know you've got uh, things to do and places to go so i'm gonna let you go and uh, get at it and uh, we'll talk really soon. Uh, I guess we'll, yeah. we'll touch base tomorrow when the Canucks are playing. And um, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Dale. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Darren. Thanks to everybody for watching today. Uh, you did a great job with this, buddy. Keep it going. And <laughs> cheers. Thanks a lot. Okay. Well, yeah, well, that was fun. And uh, yeah, we held it down to 45, which we said we would. Um, <laughs> I, before we go, I really want to mention uh, some of our partners and sponsors. I want to mention uh, Ver Verbero, um, hockey equipment and apparel company, our industry leader in technology, performance, and value. Right now, they're featuring the Mercury V350, the lightest, most balanced hockey stick on the market. Very explosive and durable. And uh, yeah, try it out. Um, get onto uh, Complete Sports Media's um, website, uh, completesportsmedia.com. 
and uh, we'll be able to get you a stick out and you can try it and, and beat your buddies at a local beer league or uh, if you're a junior player, uh, yeah, blow your uh, teammates away with this uh, amazing new stick. The lightest stick in the world, 350 grams and uh, very, very amazing uh, performance I hear. So uh, also our uh, sponsor Forever Living, this is the Aloe Vera Company. They grow and manufacture aloe vera based products for health and beauty. Uh, fantastic products, uh, great line. Also go to our website and we'll be able to give you a lot of details and some of the products that you can purchase. And we don't want to forget Anchor, great partner for uh, Complete Sports Media, amazing podcasts that every time we post one of these podcasts, they post it on many other platforms around the world and give the ability to people listen to uh, on different platforms. So really great uh, partner of us and sponsor and uh, we love Anchor. So go to anchorfm.com and you can uh, create your own podcast or you can listen to others like this one. So uh, thanks uh, everybody for tuning in. Enjoy the hockey moving forward. Go Canucks, go. And uh, yeah, we, will, we appreciate your time as always. We will catch you very soon. Take care. Love you lots. Bye for now.